My name is Danielle Badra, and I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. I'm a queer Arab American, and today I'm wearing an olive green button-up t-shirt. My brown hair has a nice swoop with a couple cowlicks sticking up, and my vitiligo is vibrant and beautiful. Given the subject matter of this poetry capsule, I extend care towards you as you choose if, when, and how to engage with it. I am the author of the poetry collection, Like We Still Speak, which won the 2021 Etel Adnan Poetry Prize selected by Hayan Sharara and Fadi Judah. Like We Still Speak, is a collection of voices from those I've loved or those I've admired intermingled with my own voice. It is a series of conversations about life, loss, and love. And one of the predominant voices in the collection is that of my older sister, Rachel Badra. When my sister died suddenly and unexpectedly, at the young age of 28, I was just 25 years old. At that point in my life, I was fortunate enough to have only experienced death and grief from a distance that made sense to me. My grandparents, my dog, my aunts, those whose losses, while also deeply sad and difficult, made sense because you expect death to follow a sort of hierarchy with those closer to the ends of their life going first and those toward the beginning of life being far off of death's radar. So when I was sitting in the emergency room at 7 a.m. the morning after Valentine's Day 2012, anxiously awaiting someone to come tell me that my sister, Rachel, was going to make it, that she was young and healthy and strong, I never would have guessed death was waiting so nearby. I rifled through my sister's purse to try and make some sense of what had happened. Why did my sister's boyfriend wake to my sister having seizures in the middle of the night? Did she accidentally take the wrong medicine, a drug? I'm not exactly sure what I was looking for, but what I found was a black moleskin book filled with poems she'd written while working at the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. And there was an entry dated February 14th, 2012, just hours before this grim scene. Rachel wrote, quote, there is a storm coming. The thickly painted clouds will press their way in. Your house sunlit in its glossy whites and blues will be blotted out, darkened. There will be no room for light in your halls. The greens and reds of the flowers will fade, if not fall away entirely. There will only be gray left, gray scooped out with a trowel, pasted on. You will breathe it in. It will fall on your children as you kiss them goodnight. They will carry it with them. Ominous. At that moment, I could only wonder if she knew this was coming, but that's a discussion for another day. This was the first written artifact I collected of my sisters. It still sits on my writing desk today as an echo of her voice. I want to be clear, the poetry in that book it isn't a memory, it is her imagination. It is her voice preserved forever. After my sister died, I found several folders filled with more of her poetry, more of her voice. It's like she left me with an open-ended conversation, 
a mode for me to communicate with her from the beyond. And I had so many questions for her. I had such an urgent need to talk to my sister, my best friend. Thankfully, she left me with an inheritance of words and I knew I had to respond to them. This is where the concept of a dialogue with the dead started for me, but it has transformed into something far more expansive. And I hope this approach to poetry, to preserving and responding to written artifacts is something that could be helpful in the writing process of others navigating loss. I have found this writing process to be very therapeutic because it allows you to speak with your dead in a very exploratory and unrestricted way. The dead have left you with their words and it is up to you to decide how to respond. Whether the response is praise or sadness or anger or gratitude, you decide how you need to respond to this loss and what you want to say to your dead. So let's start with the artifact. Look everywhere for words your dead left behind. It may be in a moleskin book in a purse or in a social media post or even a voicemail. It may be a note they scribbled in the margins of their favorite book. It may be a diary entry. It may be a postcard they sent you from vacation or a birthday card. Look for the words of your dead. And once you've found them, choose a few words or a sentence or a paragraph whatever length of text that holds the most meaning to you. Take those meaningful words and write them down yourself in a notebook or in a word doc. Place them on the page in whatever way you'd like in terms of line breaks, but try to otherwise preserve every word. Once you have these words, not your words, even though you wrote them down, these words that were left behind, study them, meditate on them, sit with these words. Let these words live and breathe with you. Give them life again. Once you feel like you have a deeper understanding of these words and you know what you want to say, start writing your response. Perhaps you can start with writing an epistolary poem, a poem that is a message or a letter to your lost one. Respond to the words of your lost with a letter to them, like you would mail this to their afterlife address. This can be an opportunity for you to respond directly to the written artifact or to say something you never had the opportunity to say before they passed, or to say something you never want them to forget. As my father was dying, he would look to me and say, I love you and don't you forget it. He would say it in this sing-song way as if remembering a lyric from the past. He never said I love you to me in this way before. And I remember thinking this was something significant, a definite artifact. I looked up the phrase after he passed and found out it was a song from his youth, a song by Perry Como. And the tune matched exactly the sing-song way he said I love you to me. I haven't yet, but I want to one day respond to the lyrics in that song with an epistolary poem, a letter to him to deconstruct and meditate on this last message he sung to me 
in his dementia addled last days. Another response option for this lingual artifact is to try a form that I used throughout my book, like we still speak, the contrapuntal form. Your response could be written directly beside these words, this artifact, in a contrapuntal form with two columns, one column for the words of your lost and one column for your response with a third poem formed in the space between the first column and the second. Take, for example, my poem, An Entire Universe. In this poem, I selected a section of a poem written by my sister. Her words say, I thought of how at that moment, I realized I was crying while smiling. My response was, your voice, I listened to it lilt. I lost an entire universe. Worlds crumble without oxygen into scattered asteroid belts. Comets burn on impact. I am somehow still alive. And the third poem formed between the words of my sister and my response is the dialogue, the conversation you can form between the living and the dead. The third poem reads, I thought of your voice, how I listened to it lilt. At that moment, I lost an entire universe. I realized worlds crumble. I was without oxygen, crying into scattered asteroid belts. While comets burn on impact, I am somehow smiling, still alive. If you don't want to incorporate the words of your dead into your own, you could use these words as an epigraph or a frame for your poetic response. For example, in my poem, The Phillips Collection, I created a frame for a poem I wrote about my sister's last day of life using her last poem that she wrote on her last day alive. Her last poem creates a rectangular frame using thin lines that run horizontally and vertically along the margins of the page, surrounding two square blocks of prose forming my poetic response. Framing it as if a painting, as if a Rothko painting with bold color blocks of green, maroon, tangerine, ochre, and red hanging on the wall of the Rothko room at the Phillips Collection in Washington, DC. <clears throat> I am going to read this poem by reading the frame, my sister's poem first. And this is the poem I read earlier, so it may be familiar. Then I will read my poem, which is the two blocks of text in the middle of my sister's frame. The Phillips Collection. There is a storm coming. The thickly painted clouds will press their way in. Your house, sunlit in its glossy whites and blues, will be blotted out, darkened. There will be no room for light in your halls. The greens and reds of the flowers will fade, if not fall away entirely. There will be only gray left, gray scooped out with a trowel, paste it on. You will breathe it in. It will fall on your children as you kiss them goodnight. They will carry it with them. There was a gray painting on display that day, a traveling exhibit she was told to rotate through, monitor the artwork, make sure it isn't touched, tell everyone to just 
Breathe it in. She worked her whole life for this moment, the chance to stand and study light, the way it forms pigment on canvas, a white wall in an old windowless room. She prayed for this perspective, her heart pasted on with a trowel. She always knew there was a storm coming, one she had met before, been soaked by such torrential she walked around prepared for it. Pen ready and paper, she sheltered her words close. She must have known this would be her final Rothko, her last time worshiping in the stark open chapel, a poem in the black book she kept in her purse. She carried it with her while she worked the collection, guarding art and guiding art lovers, where the greens and reds of the flowers will fade, sunlight is carefully located. The thickly painted clouds will press their way in, will rearrange the way she lived so close to vibrant colors, her arm hair electric, her skin a glow. In a way, she understood the after effect of living and how it pays homage to both birth and death all in one fleeting moment. She predicted that there will be no room for light in halls. Perhaps you'll find another angle into the words of your lost, another avenue for dialogue, for communication with the beyond. Either way, I hope that this process is as cathartic and healing for you as it is for me and offers an opportunity for you to talk to that person you've lost again and again. Thank you for walking through this poetry capsule with me. It has been an honor to share my writing process and a sliver of my grieving process with you. Grief is a journey unique to each loss. If you allow that journey to be a source of inspiration, then you can potentially produce something tangible of your grief something you can carry and say, this is what my grief looks like. Something you can carry and occasionally set down. <laughs>